Good morning students my name is Maria Ahmed Wasim from Little Angels High School Gwalior and I am your science teacher welcome to our online session i hope you all are safe at home and i'm sure you must be understanding and enjoying the videos that we all are sending you now in this video we will be talking about adaptations in animals which is lesson number 3 so without wasting any time let's get started So children some of you might have fish at home and we all know that fish lives in water but what will happen if we take the fish out of the water yes it would die now this is because the fish is adapted to live in water only now what is the meaning of adaptation then to survive and reproduce animals have to adjust to their surroundings this process of adjustment to surroundings is known as adaptation now there are three types of adaptations that we will be discussing adaptation for environment adaptation for food and lastly adaptation for protection so let's start according to the habitat animals are divided into five groups which are terrestrial aquatic amphibians aerial and lastly arboreal Let us understand adaptation to environment by studying these groups. Now children, we all have seen cows, cats and dogs. Do they live in water? No, they live on land. So animals that live on land are called as terrestrial animals. Let's look at some more examples of terrestrial animals and understand how they have adapted themselves to live on land. Animals like polar bear and reindeer live in cold places and have thick fur which protects them from the outer cold environment. They also have white color so that they can merge with their surrounding and escape from their enemies. Now camel is also called as the ship of the desert. Desert is a very very hot place to survive. Let's see how a camel survives in the desert. Camel has thick skin and can live up to 10 to 12 days without taking food and water. It has a hump which is a reservoir of fat. So when camel doesn't get food, it can still survive because of the reserve fat. Also, it has broad pads on the bottom of its feet which prevent it from sinking in the soft sand. Now children, you might have seen during winter season that rats and lizards suddenly disappear where do they go they go under hibernation so what is hibernation during summer season when the food is easily available these animals eat lots of food and store it in the form of fat under their skin and when winter arrives and the food is not available these animals go off to sleep for the entire season This winter sleep is known as hibernation. So what is the advantage of hibernation? This helps them to conserve their energy till the food is available again. Some examples are bear and rat. Now do you know where the shark, whale, dolphin, crab and octopus live? Yes, we all know. They all live in water. So animals those live in water are known as aquatic animals. So let's discuss about some aquatic animals and their adaptations. Fish has special organs to breathe called as gills. They breathe dissolved oxygen in water. They also have fins which help them to move. Now some aquatic animals like whales and dolphins don't have gills but have lungs to breathe so how will they breathe oxygen in the water for that they come up to the water surface to take oxygen now turtles swims by the help of paddle like feet birds like crane and flamingo have long legs to walk in water and also have long beaks to catch fish under the water now we all have seen frogs Now there is something very special about frog. It can live both on land and water. 
So the animals that live both on land and water are known as amphibians. Other examples are toad and salamander. Let's look at the adaptations they have developed. They breathe on land using lungs. But they don't have gills, so how are they living under water? In water, they use their moist skin. Also, their limbs are adapted for swimming. Now, birds like sparrow and pigeon and insects like butterfly and moth spend most of their times in air and are called as aerial animals. Let's look at their adaptations. They have wings to fly. Their bones are hollow which makes them light so that they can fly easily. Also, their body shape is unique which helps them to easily fly in air. Now, where have you seen monkey, squirrel and chameleon? Of course, on trees. So, those animals that spend most of their time on trees are known as arboreal animals. Let's see their adaptations. They have long limbs and tails which help them to climb and hang from branches of trees. Four limbs of squirrel help it to hold food and put it in the mouth. So children, what does a goat, cow and sheep eat? We all know this. They all eat plants. So the animals that eat plants are called as herbivores or plant eating animals. Let's look at their adaptations. They have sharp flat front teeth to cut leaves. They have inner side teeth to chew. Also they have long and strong legs. Other examples are elephant, giraffe, deer and rabbit. Now I am sure you all might have gone to the zoo. And of course you would have seen animals like tiger and lion and also birds like hawk and eagle. Now what is common in all of them? Yes, they all eat flesh and are known as carnivores. Birds like hawk and eagle have sharp beaks to tear the flesh. They also have strong claws called as talons to catch and tear their prey. Animals like lion and tiger have strong legs that help them to run fast and catch their prey. They have strong pointed curved front teeth and also strong grinding teeth which help them to tear and eat flesh. So children, you all know that we all can eat both plants and animals. Now many of us are animal lovers and love to keep pets like cats and dogs. What do you feed them? Of course, fresh and plant-based products. Some other examples like beer and crow also eat both plants and animals. So the animals and birds that eat both plants and animals are called omnivores. Now what are parasites? Animals that depend on other animals for their food are called as parasites. They live on bodies of other animals and suck their blood. All parasites causes disease in their hosts. Some examples are tapeworm, leech, mosquito, roundworm and lice. Now the last type of adaptation is adaptation for protection. It is important for animals to protect themselves and continue to live and reproduce. We will be looking at several ways by which animals can save themselves. They can make burrows deep in the soil to escape enemies. Let's, let's guess these animals. Rabbit, rat and hare. They have big body size, so it is difficult to be eaten by other animals. This is very easy to guess. Elephant, hippo and whale. Now let's understand what is camouflage. It is a defense mechanism used by some animals to avoid detection by blending into their surrounding. Color helps them to camouflage with their surrounding. Let's see the examples. Polar bear. Now you know that the snow is white in color and also the polar bear is white in color. So it camouflages with the surrounding very easily. 
Now the second example that I will give you is very interesting and you will love it. Chameleon. Now you can see that the surrounding of chameleon is green in color and also the skin of chameleon is green in color. Now look at this. The surrounding of the chameleon has turned into brown and also the color of chameleon has turned into brown. So we can see that the chameleon is able to alter its color according to the change in the surrounding. Wasn't it interesting? Stripes help them to camouflage by merging with the long grasses of the jungle, example zebra and tiger. Now this is very interesting. Their color and shapes merge so well with the surrounding that it's very difficult for the enemy to detect them. Examples are leaf insect and stick insect. Now see even we are very uh, confused at, as to what is the surrounding and what is the insect. Now let's discuss about migration. Now children have you ever noticed that in any particular season that a large flock of birds is flying by? Why and where are they going? Have you ever wondered? They are migrating. So what is migration? Seasonal movement of birds and animals in large groups to escape unfavorable conditions is known as migration. Example is Siberian crane. And with this, we come to the end of the chapter. I hope you all were able to understand the chapter well. Thank you.